make a brand channel here. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about something uh, more on the dark side of spirituality. So a couple of nights ago I had an experience in which I was being trained by who I perceived to be Satan, the devil. I'm just going to go through everything that happened. Now to some of you guys this is going to seem like uh, he's crazy or something like that, but obviously um, I feel a little bit different about heaven and hell and the devil and all of that stuff uh, being a Hebrew Israelite and you know I have aspirations to succeed in life on levels that are you know um, higher than just working at a nine to five job for the rest of my life so in those cases we've heard a million stories about how Satan comes into people's life and you know gives them the option and you know we hear a lot of artists just straight up say the devil came to me in my sleep some of them say I met the devil no matter how they put it they always let you know they sold their soul after they actually came in contact with Satan so to me this is not a joke and it just confirmed the actuality of Satan asking you give in exchange for what you want and so I'm just gonna go through what happened to me I was in between consciousness and sleep when this happened when I woke up uh, officially when I came to out of the unconsciousness and consciousness I understood that I wasn't totally asleep and absolutely did not feel like a dream it felt like let me just get into the story. We start off inside an attic. It's, it felt like, it looked like an old attic from, you know, 1970s, 1980s on like a barn or something. There was like a light swinging. It was all wooded. Everything was wood around us. It wasn't finished or anything like that. And there was a man standing there. <clears throat> And there were two men inside that room. One man was uh, my general manager from my job. I have no idea why he was inside the room. The other man was somebody inside like a, like one of those Colombo gumshoe hats, like it was a private eye or something like that. And he was wearing the same dress uh, as one of those guys too. It was like a tie, shabby, uh, blazer and, and pants to match and they were laughing at the fact uh, that people didn't know that the moon was a half an hour away from the earth and that was one thing that kind of just made my jaw drop they they were like one the the other men who pre is presumed to have been Satan himself had one hand in his pocket and he was laughing, slapping his knee. They were both like having a good one and and uh, talking about how the moon was half an hour away from the earth and how people didn't know it and how people were so stupid. The second thing that happened in that room was uh, the man pulled a box of pampers out of his pocket and threw it on the ground and it grew to the natural size of a case of pampers like you guys know what a, a case of pampers look like if you have children or if you've been inside a walmart or something like that in the last 10 years or probably more than that but that was another thing that they were laughing about and like saying these people don't understand <laughs> anything and so I'm sitting there just uh, astonished and then on top of that I don't understand what this meant but the man perceived to be Satan was standing on a, a package just like an old school package with brown wrapping and then a, two str a, a string tied around it kind of making a cross and it was in a bow tie he was stand he had one foot on a package and he said something I don't remember exactly what he said but he was referring to the package as Haiti he was saying this is Haiti and he had one foot on the box so uh, forgive me because I don't remember exactly what he was saying about it but all of it had me in awe and so 
when they turned to me and noticed that I was uh, like astonished by all of this stuff, then the next thing I knew, we were inside of a gym, and the same guy uh, with the with the gumshoe stuff on was sitting there, and he told me, "Now we're gonna see if you're one of us or not." And so. It was a big, huge looking athlete, like a high school wrestler or something like that. And he was going to test my ability to take pain or something like that. And so what had happened was he acted like he was going to punch the wind out of me. And then he started tapping me. Don't know what that was about. Maybe it was a test to see if there was some fear in me or not. But then he did it again with his foot. He threw me on the ground. That was a hard slam that I got. And then he raised his foot up like he was going to stomp me out. But what he started doing was tapping me with his foot. And so that was the end of that. And it was very, like, light. <laughs> it was, it was I, get, I don't know if it was a fear test. And it seems like that's what it was. Because I can't comprehend why I went through that training. But then the next thing that happened was the athlete got up on some type of frame and the man, the trainer, we'll call him, uh, well, let's just call him Satan for the rest of the video. Satan started, the guy started gyrating like this. And I need you guys to humor me for the video so we can get through to the part that <laughs> is really serious. So this is just the, the, the trials that I was going through to see if I was one of them. So the athlete is standing inside a frame and he's gyrating his body like this. And Satan is trying to, this is another part of, that's kind of gray area for me, but he's trying to show me like the vibrations that move, how to vibe, how we control the vibrations that move through our body. And so he's poking the athlete while the athlete is gyrating like this. And that, and what was happening, dream for lack of better words, was as he was gyrating, every time Satan poked him, a little bit of a spirit would jump up inside the air. Like it was like kind of a matrixy thing. Like you would see shat five different shadows or five different dimensions of this guy's gyration going up as he kept gyrating every time he poked stop right there and five different dimension shadows and uh, it was just resonating out of his body i'm not sure what that meant and so i was made to get on the frame and demonstrate that and so after that we switch to what becomes kind of the scarier part not at the time at the time this i had no fear during this whole time until the very end and so we switch into the very definition of playing in the darkness and so i was inside of a dark mist like absolute darkness but somehow i understood that there were some kids playing football and as i'm in this darkness while i'm understanding and see for some reason knowing that there were, there were some people playing football i also was inside a big huge crowd of kids that were just you know lally gagging on it was kind of like if you've ever been to school obviously you know what it's like when l the lunch period starts and everybody's roaming through the hall so everybody was just walking talking some of the kids were kicking balls and you know talking to each other girls had books in their hands this whole time is absolute darkness but i could see all of these things happening not as clear as day but i knew that they were happening even though we were all in total darkness we could all see and talk to each other i wasn't talking to anybody i just ended up getting inside the crowd and following them into the campus. So we ended up on a campus where we saw two staff members talking by a, a light, a, a lamp, like it was a lamp that was lit up next to them. And 
When I got near them, I walked up to both of the counselors and asked them, where am I supposed to be? And the female counselor just looked at me and walked away. And the male counselor, he looked like um, like an adventurer kind of, you know, uh, sly guy. And he was like, he just walked up to me and he took my arm. And so the next place that we flashed to was a hall. It was like a big hall. It kind of looked like a penitentiary hall. And this is the freaky part. So the counselor that I was with, he goes up to the guy at the front of the hall and he points at me and he's uh, talking and I could hear the guy that was at the start at the like the gateway to the hall saying oh this is his final test and so this guy the counselor grabs my arm and starts chugging me like running like fastly walking me over to this it looked like a a caged box but it was totally transparent and what you see on the wall was it was written inside like a demonic puzzle uh, a demonic way a demonic puzzle but I could still read it and what it said it was just tape it was like tape and one of brown cardboard and it said ear or anus and I started screaming, no, no, no. And then the man instantly turned around and started vastly tugging me, pushing me back out of the cafeteria. And then when we get out, it flashes to the next scene, so to speak. And the guy's sitting at a, at a meal table with a couple of other uh, kids, a couple of other students, so to speak. And he says, I'm not taking you back. You gotta go the hard way, you're not taking the, the, uh, the women's way, whatever that meant. And for some reason, I, I just said, you can't take me back. And then he gets up and he, like his whole demeanor change and it changes. And he's like, all right, well, get ready. I guess this is me coming back to the realm of the living or the, the reality, but we went through some of the most horrifying uh, places or trials. I'm, I think it's like your worst nightmares, but I had to face those. We jumped over cliffs. We uh, we climbed up damn damn mountains and things of that nature. So I'm not going to go into detail about that because I really don't like telling people what you know my fears are and things of that nature. But he was like my he was like my, it was like Indiana Jones. Come on, you ready? We're gonna do this, blah, blah, blah. So he's like adventurous about it. I'm terrified, but I'm doing what I gotta do to get back here. And to me, this was the devil giving me the choice of selling my soul or not. And I can say happily that I rejected the devil. So going back to that, uh, cafeteria where the caged cubicle was that where the statement it just said ear or anus there was nothing else said and there were students inside the box I'm wondering if I would have even if I would have even been if I would have even stepped foot inside that door would it have already meant that I sold my soul and so and that was creepy. I, I'm, me telling you this story right now is probably not creeping you out as much as it creeped me out. But the reality of it is, I wasn't afraid at any point inside that um, experience until I saw ear or anus on the board. At that point, I knew it was Satan. I knew all of this was like hell or the, the, the dimension between hell. And I knew I was being set up to sign my soul away. And I, when I came to, I felt like I instantly opened my Instagram and my Facebook and all of those, and my music and all that stuff, because I felt like if I would have sold, if I would have chose air or anus, I don't know what the air was, but obviously we know what the anus is. But I felt like if I would have went in that door and chose something, my Instagram, and my music was gonna instantly start picking up like millions of followers or something like that, and so. 
I felt like I rejected Satan and I saved my soul in exchange for not getting instant fame for no reason or you know um you know starting to get deals or something like that for no reason like a lot of these people do it was some, it's something that I'm very happy to be able to report to you guys but I believe that selling your soul Satan coming to you and asking for your soul in exchange for the world is real it might not be inside those actual words honestly it might come to you in this form and that's, I'm not the first person who's speaking about spoken about this in this form. Other people have talked about how to how Satan have come to them inside their dreams or in the darkness. I can literally say I was trained by Satan in the darkness. He tried to woo me with things that we don't understand inside this regular world or we don't have knowledge of inside this regular world. And then he tried to bring me into that room and make me choose ear or anus, whatever that meant. So, I feel like this has a lot, a lot to do with why a lot of the people in the entertainment industry are the way they are, why they all keep on uh, exposing themselves to have sold their soul to Satan, and uh, why they, they seem like uh, miserable rich millionaires it seems like they're in a prison it doesn't seem like they're just like living a life and happy and stuff like they used to when I was a little kid today people that are millionaires and uh, famous entertainers seem like they're living in a prison and I think that this type of situation is part of the reason so I don't know Obviously, some of you are still not going to believe that the moon is on Earth or close to the Earth, but it was, to me, like a revelation. It was like, the people that run this world, even below Satan, still know a lot of things and can show you things that will astonish you and make you feel like you're living on a different level than regular human beings. And I think a lot of the people that are celebrities have been exposed to a lot of different knowledges. They've probably been taken to the highest mountain and seen things that make them believe that they're in the know, they're part of the end crowd. But even with that, they're slaves to the contracts that they signed. I was trained by Satan in the darkness. I truly played in the darkness by no option of my own. I was dragged into this dimension and I was given the decision to sell myself for fame and fortune. If I am able to attain wealth, it's going to be on my terms. It's not going to be through selling my soul to Satan. So I just wanted to put that out there. It is not a joke. Some of you still don't believe and things like uh, heaven and hell and the Lord and, and the devil, but I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And there is a lot of people in entertainment that I do. And this is a warning to you all. If you have aspirations to be great, Satan will come to you. If he doesn't come to you in reality and bring you to an office, a high rise in San Francisco or Los Angeles, he will come to you in your sleep. And that counts. So when you get the when you when he gives you that offer, it's gonna be on you to have the strength to say no. Alright folks, so I'm gonna leave this video right there. Get in the comments, let me know what you think about my adventure in the darkness. And um, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Follow Peace. back to reality, break through the looking glass. What you looking at? Rude, what you looking at? I ain't looking at you, sir. I'm looking past. I gotta be mean, cause nice guys finish last. And I'm about to have a birthday bash. My life's backstage, and you don't get no pass. All kind of women I get, I just don't brag. And no charges filed by any pussies that I grab. Laugh when they condemn me.